we left off here. And I was about to tell you that the enzyme that is busy copying DNA um, does it kind of in the same way that you would make a copy of that piece of pottery by using the mold. And in this case, one strand of DNA is going to be the mold and the other strand of DNA is going to be the piece of pottery. So let's imagine for a moment that you are the enzyme and it's your job to make a perfect copy of this blue strand. That's your job. Let me ask you, do you want the blue strand? No, no, you don't. If it was your job to make a perfect copy of the blue strand, that would be as if it was your job to make a perfect copy of the piece of pottery. Do you want the piece of pottery? No, you don't. What you want is the mold. And that is what, that is what this system does. The enzyme whose job it is to make a perfect copy of the blue strand will take the red strand and then it will walk right down the red strand. And everywhere that on the red strand that there is an A, it will put a T. And everywhere on the red strand that there's a G, on the strand it's building, remember it's building a perfect copy of the blue strand, it will put a C. Right? We, will, we will get to there again in a moment. So ribonucleic acid, that is R, N A, ribonucleic acid. It's similar to DNA, except for it has ribose as its sugar. If I ask you if there is ribose in DNA, you will say, no, there is not ribose in DNA. There is deoxyribose in DNA. Now, you might say, oh, the letters R-I-B-O-S-E are in DNA. Yeah, that's not what the question is. Ribose is one sugar. Deoxyribose is a different sugar. They are different. There is deoxyribose in DNA, but not RNA. There's ribose in RNA, but not DNA. And also, RNA is single-stranded instead of double-stranded. Um, in addition, RNA is designed to be temporary. RNA is, sorry, is temporary. RNA is designed to be temporary, and DNA is designed to be permanent. And you know, that's almost like this major agreement that all life on planet Earth has. It's like, let's all agree to make DNA permanent and, and RNA temporary. Um, there aren't any life forms that tried to do it the opposite way, or if there were, they ended up being outcompeted. RNA, in addition, has got four nitrogenous bases, except for where DNA has G, A, T, and C, RNA has got G, A, U, and C. G, A, U, and C. Now, the binding rules of complementarity are still basically the same. Essentially, essentially, the binding rules for DNA are going to be G with C with three hydrogen bonds, right? A with T with two hydrogen bonds. But with RNA, whenever you're making RNA, oh, I'll do a strand of DNA. G, we're gonna make Gattaca, okay, right? Wherever there's a strand of DNA, if I want to make a strand of RNA off of it, where if there's a G, I'll put a C, but wherever there's an A, I can't put a T because I'm RNA, I don't have a T, right? So then the complementary strand would look like this. This would be RNA and the blue would be the DNA, all right? So here is DNA and RNA right side by side. DNA's got deoxyribose, RNA has ribose. The difference between deoxyribose and ribose is for deoxyribose, it got rid of that little oxygen. You see how it's missing? That's why it's called deoxyribose. Now they both have got phosphate sugar base, that's the same. They both have got G, A, sorry, G, A, and C. Where they're different is that RNA uses the pyrimidine uracil in the place 
where DNA would have used the pyrimidine uh, thymine. Okay. Uh, DNA is double-stranded, RNA is single-stranded. Great. Now, when we talk about DNA, there's just one DNA, basically, at least for all of our stories. But when we talk about RNA, even for this class, you need to know these three different types of RNA. And if you take in molecular biology, you're going to need to know more than these many RNAs. The first one is mRNA. See that lowercase m? That lowercase m stands for, oops, messenger. I'm writing that way too big. Okay. Messenger, mRNA, the m stands for messenger. What is messenger RNA? Uh, messenger RNA is a strand of RNA that carries uh, the instructions of one gene of DNA, right? RRNA, that R stands for ribosomal. Have you ever wondered what ribosomes are made out of? No, probably you haven't, okay? But ribosomes are made out of ribosomal RNA and protein. I think that's an exam question, right? The last one, tRNA. tRNA, the T stands for transfer. And tRNAs have a very important job. It is their job to carry an amino acid to the ribosome as the ribosome is putting amino acids together. Okay. Now, DNA has got two really big jobs, and they're just different, Alrighty. The first job DNA has is to copy itself perfectly whenever the cell divides. And that job is called DNA replication, DNA replication. DNA replication has nothing to do with RNA, DNA replication only happens once in the life of any cell. So when a cell has gotten big enough and mature enough that it wants to uh, divide into two cells, that is when the DNA will be replicated. So you will start off with one copy of DNA in a cell and at the end of DNA replication, you will have two copies. So one copy of DNA, and this is all of your DNA. And at the end of replication, there will be two copies of DNA. DNA as a process, it stands alone, right? One copy of DNA turns into two copies of DNA. When you think about the DNA that's in your cell, DNA has got all of the instructions for making a perfect you, an entire you, right? The DNA that's in every, almost every one of your cells is exactly what you got from your mom and dad back when you were just one cell big. And it is like an entire library. It's like the campus library. All of those books. Now, all of those books in the library you as a student here on campus, will you read them all? Probably not, right? Any individual cell that's inside the human body will not use all of the DNA that is inside of its nucleus either. But whenever a cell in the human body needs to divide, it will make a perfect copy of that entire library of instructions. Right? And that is called DNA replication. So here we have got the DNA that you have, and it's going to be divided. And remember, we are visualizing it as one strand being like the piece of pottery and the other strand being like the piece of mold. The first thing that's going to happen is that this enzyme called helicase, H-E-L-I-C-A-S-E, helicase is going to unwind the DNA and is going to split the hydrogen bonds so that we're taking that piece of pottery and we're going to be splitting it apart. 
while the DNA is inside of your cell, it spends most of its time put together the piece of pottery with the mold. This is the piece of pottery with the mold, right? But when it's going to be divided, it is going to, uh, when it's going to be copied, it first needs to be unwound a little bit and divided. So that's the job of helicase. What is topoisomerase doing? Topoisomerase is keeping that DNA double helix from over twisting, right? So you've taken this, this spring and you've untwisted it a little bit so you can open it up so enzymes can get in there. Topoisomerase is kind of holding it untwisted. Then for 151, the only third enzyme you need to know is this one, DNA polymerase. Your, I don't know if you've had your, D, your enzyme lab yet, but enzymes are supposed to be named so that the last letters are A, S, E, and the rest of it tells you what it does. DNA polymerase is the enzyme that makes, it's the enzyme, the A's, that makes a DNA polymer, right? So what would you imagine RNA polymerase does? Yeah, it makes RNA, okay? So you need to know that the DNA polymerase is going to walk down the available strand and wherever it sees a C, on the other side, it'll put a G. Wherever it sees an A, on the other side, it will put a T, right? Now, DNA polymerase is a lovely enzyme, particularly in humans, but it really doesn't have that hard a job to do. Because how are you going to make a mistake, right? The G's, the A's, the T's, and the C's are as different from black, white, red, yellow. So that means wherever there's a black one, the enzyme needs to put white. Wherever there's a red one, the enzyme needs to put yellow. That's all it needs to do. And that is why it's very easy for this enzyme to do its job quickly and correctly, meaning it didn't, doesn't make any mistakes. Okay, so to start off with, the, uh, uh, the helicase is going to unwind the DNA double helix and it breaks the hydrogen bonds between the complementary bases. Then, I don't know where I am. Then DNA polymerase, no. Then topoisomerase is going to prevent the overtwisting of the double helix. And then DNA polymerase is going to make new chains. DNA polymerase on the left strand is going to make a perfect copy of the right strand. And DNA polymerase on the right strand is going to make a perfect copy of the left strand. Just like if I sent the mold to my cousin in Ohio, and I asked him, hey, could you make perfect copies of the mold? He'd say, well, that'll be hard. But if I gave him the mold and I said, make perfect, perfect copies of the piece of pottery, he'd be like, no sweat, right? Now, those of you who take microbiology, you need to know more, but for 151, you just need to know this, ready? So here we see that the two strands get divided up, all right? We'll call this the left one, we'll call this one the right one, and they go to different sides. And then the left strand will be used to make a perfect copy of the right strand, and the right strand will be used to make a perfect copy of the left strand. When we're done, when we're done, when the enzymes are done, then you will notice that this is a brand new strand of DNA. Well, is it a brand new strand of DNA? Not exactly. Each of the resulting copies of DNA will be one new piece that was built on one old strand. And that is why this process is known as semi-conservative. I do not have room to write semi-conservative on here. It's called semi-conservative replication. We'll start there at the beginning of the next video.